The other thing about training that other way, one thing, it's not easy to do. You can risk getting hurt because your dog can become aggressive. They can want to, you know, if they get really confused, like, I'll give you an example. If you're playing with a puppy and you're roughhousing, and we all think that's kind of fun, right? And you're roughhousing with a puppy and then the puppy bites you, you might let it go a couple times and then another time you're like, ouch, that hurts, you know, and you, you get upset. And then you tell the puppy no. And so sometimes you let them get away with it a little bit, sometimes you don't. All I'm trying to point out is you might not be clear about exactly what you're expecting of that puppy. And so then the puppy's like, I don't know what you want. I want to play with you, but that I don't want to play with you because you're going to get mad and I don't know when you're going to get mad. You might know people like that, right? You're like, I want to hang out with you, but sometimes you get mad and I don't know why or when. You're so moody. So you just decide, forget about it. You know, I, I'm just not going to be near you. And you might anticipate when they're going to get upset and then you get upset first to protect yourself. And that's what a puppy or dog tends to do. We call that conflict aggression. That's a diagnosis. And so when you're doing that, you're not being clear and you can risk behavior problems. And there are other behavior problems. Your dog becomes anxious in other areas because the anxiety tends to breed and grow. So at first, maybe they're just a little anxious about you, but then they become anxious about other people or other dogs or, you know, being left alone at home. So it's really important that you, you know, try to minimize any anxiety you cause in your dog and to, you know, be clear about what you want. And you can do that in a happy way. The other thing is they'll say, oh, you have to show them you mean it. Well, like a voice, right? Like if you say sit, most people who tell their dog to sit, they say, sit, you sit, you know, like they're giving a command. <laughs> and the thing is, your dog doesn't care about words. They don't use words. They use sounds, but they don't use words. And so they can't get the depth of language that we can from like reading a book, for example, or watching a movie. I could cry at a movie, right? Because of the language I'm hearing. But your dog isn't going to because they don't understand the language. So the difference between the words, the reason your dog learns the words and how they respond to them is how you differentiate that word from other words, right? So if I'm just talking to you like I'm talking right now, and then I say, sit, like the dog, goes, what? <laughs> you know, they'll pick up on it, right? Same as if I went, sit, you know, both of those sort of isolate that word and make it easier for your dog to pick up on it. They do learn words. And certainly like assistance dogs learn, you know, like let's say you have somebody with Parkinson's disease and so their hands are moving all the time. So you can't really use body language, you know, hand signals to teach the dog. So the dog has to learn words and that's harder to teach. It can be done, but it's harder to teach. I have to say my dog knows some words, but typically if you're stringing together a bunch of words, your dog's gonna have a hard time picking out that word. So you can choose to say it in a harsh way, sit, come, right? Or you could choose to say it in a happy way, sit, come, and your dog will come. 